Hey, big thank you to our Patreon supporters. Uh, Steve Bradshaw, thank you and thanks, buddy. Dr. John Vanderlaan, thank you and thanks, buddy. If you want to support us, hey, try MassBright.com. Get some MassBright and try coupon code Chicken Taco. Hey, there's a link to Lefty 27. I have, I'm sorry. Some of you will be thrilled, others sadly disappointed. This is a strictly educational video today, and this revolves around sleepyhead monitoring your monitoring sleep on your own, kind of being self-sufficient. So let me give you a little background. I have a business. It is a home sleep testing business. We do type two home sleep studies and they have everything you'd expect to see in an in-lab study, except that you do it in the comfort of your own home. Um, all the examples that I'll be using today are from actual patients that we had. Uh, these patients were kind enough to let me use their data uh, so long as I keep them anonymous. And uh, so, hey, thank you. If you were one of them that offered it, I really appreciate it. Um, also, what we do is we offer data analysis through Sleepyhead. Now, some of you use Sleepyhead at home, pretty adept at it. I see a lot of this on the forums, my own forum, uh, forums like CPAP Talk, Apnea Board, things like that. They'll, they'll discuss, hey, what does this wave mean? What does this wave mean? So I wanted to give you a real world example. And I know all you're looking at is right here. You're looking at P flow. That's pretty much the only thing that, that's really the only thing that Sleepyhead is showing you other than like the pressure that you're on and some leak values. But more or less, all the information you have is just this P flow line. So let me just go over some of these with you. So we have body position, S is supine, left eye, right eye, the chin. Um, these three here, which looks sloppy here, these are all the brain activity. You can tell if you're awake or asleep. Then we have snoring. We have the, the your airflow, which is just your breathing. We have the belt, upper chest, around your belly. And this is called a sum channel. It's, it's both of them combined. Uh, heart rate, and then we have blood oxygen levels. Now, some of you are hooked this up, blood oxygen with, uh, or I'm sorry, SpO2 with your sleepyhead. Most people don't do that though, um, but it is an option if you ever wanted to. So let's go ahead. I don't think you really need my big ugly face here. Um, let's go ahead and look at these. But before we do, um, these are basically examples. I'm shooting myself in the foot. So one of the things I offer, like I said, is I will go through, I'll look at your data for two weeks worth and um, it's a paid service but I get a lot of the exact same questions all the time. And part of my mission statement, if you want to call it that, is to provide, by the way, my wife hates that I give this stuff away for free. Uh, one of my things is I want you to be able to look this stuff, on, look this stuff up on your own, um, be self-sufficient, monitor yourself, because no one's really going to do it better than you ultimately. Um, that said, if you sleep apnea is hereditary, if you know someone that needs a sleep study, um, if you wouldn't mind pointing them to my website, it's axgsleepdiagnostics.com. And like I said, we do the sleep study, the initial diagnostic one, as well as uh, data analysis for those that are already on or still on CPAP. We also do just phone consultations. If you're interested in that, check it out. All right, I'm gonna get rid of my ugly mug and then we'll go ahead and start taking a look at some of these. This is kind of abstract, but what I really wanted to pay attention was a lot of times you guys will see... Um, standard just regular breathing that's very uniform along here and then you'll see it get real jagged and spiky usually when you see that jaggy spiky thing an arousal like this right here will be seen associated with it now if you don't see jaggedness in the breathing there typically is not an awakening so when you're looking at your sleepy head data you see jagginess or jagged <laughs> you see a jagged wave think to yourself ah probably woke up here and then especially if it goes back to being uniform and nice and smooth like this okay, here's another example kind of showing the same thing a little bit easier to see you see how there's it's it's real jagged here almost always that is indicative of an arousal and you can see that through the date this uh, eeg now this is being scored as a rira and why was it scored as a rira well, we were at 92 percent and we dropped down to 91 percent Sleepyhead or your, your machine, your data capable machine isn't going to show that. You're not going to know what your blood oxygen level was unless you're using one of those contact uh, SpO2 devices and that's synced up with it. Um, but more or less, I mean, for home use, I would I would caution you to not worry about whether it's a hypopnea or a rira 
but focus more on does it cause an arousal or not. That's really the crux of the argument there. Is it disrupting your sleep? If it's disrupting your sleep, it's bad. If it's not disrupting your sleep, probably not a big deal. Okay, this example I just wanted to show, a lot of people get freaked out because they see a lot of varying airflow. Um, now, one of the keys or one of the tricks that, that I personally use is I like to march out, um, what I mean march out, is I like to look out about an hour and a half or 90 minutes. So you can see right here, we're looking at the top, this person, they're asleep right here. And then if you march it out to 3.30, I'm sorry, if you march it out to 4.30, it's about right here. So we should have seen a REM period. It looks like there was like one little thing right there. Now, if you march it out again, REM period should be occurring every 90 minutes. And that gets us to right here where this is a REM period. So about every 90 minutes, you should be seeing something kind of funky. You'll see some funky breathing. It's 90 minutes out from your sleep onset and then every 90 minutes thereafter. And you don't know how long it's gonna last. But if you start seeing goofy breathing, don't automatically think, oh my God, there's something wrong with me. It's probably just REM. Uh, now you will, you'll see a lot of SpO2 fluctuations in REM if you do have SpO2 hooked up. But in general, don't worry if you start seeing erratic, centrally looking uh, events occurring in that those time periods. You'll just see random events. And hopefully I'll have an example here to show you. So this example here, I just wanted to show you that sometimes your machine will be picking up vibratory snores. Now those can either be actual snores or it can be a piece of the silicone or membrane on the mass that's flapping. And so this pink, these pink little blips here are snores. You can see how they associate with each breath. So these are snores. It's important to note that snoring is not a crime. It's never gonna be a crime. At least I don't think it is. Um, it's okay to snore. It's just, it is a sign of an obstruction, but just because you're snoring doesn't mean that anything is wrong. Now you can tell these are all the same uh, amplitude. And so there, we can deduce from that that they're fairly constant. And uh, this isn't a problem. It's if you see building snores, like a small one, slightly larger, slightly larger, slightly larger, a huge one, and then that corresponds with an airflow increase and you know all that, that's bad. But if you see rhythmic snoring, I mean, it may be annoying, but it's not uh, something that's it's not something that's really anything to worry about. Some of you want to see what uh, delta looks like. So here's stage two, and then here is stage three. Uh, this patient is a in early twenties, and so you'll you'll tend to see a lot more slow wave sleep, delta sleep, N three sleep. It's all the same thing, just different names. So here we have REM sleep, and we have um. We have some pretty gnarly hypopneas. So this, the SpO2 is dropping from 92 all the way down to 83 here. It looks like it's 92 to 88 over here. Pretty rough stuff. So these hypopneas, you can see how these are kind of, uh, like it slowly decreases. Then we see a rapid increase, slowly decreasing, rapid increase. So that's the sign of a real hypopnea. Sometimes you'll see other ways that hypopnea is manifest in sleepyhead, and they're probably not, though it's very difficult to tell a real hypopnea from a non-real hypopnea because you don't have the luxury of having uh, an SpO2 monitor, so you don't get to see this, but you do get to see if there's an arousal or not, and so we can see a little bit of jaggedness on the top of these. And again, that's usually indicative of um, an arousal. Ah, uh, this is my favorite of the entire bunch. This is the number one question I get. Is this a central apnea? Now, this is typically where I tell people, oh, you know, you do like a little sigh or deep, you know, deep breath. Um, sometimes people say, you know, change position. This is not a position change. But you can see, look, rhythmic breathing, everything is looking good, looking good, looking good. We do see a little snort here. Maybe this is a little snort, a little sigh, a little something. There's not really any arousal that I see here. But you do see this thing that looks like a central apnea after. That is your body doing a little <gasps> and then a, <laughs> a pause as it tries to figure out, okay, do I need to breathe or not? Uh, yep, I do. Okay, let's go ahead and breathe. There's no arousal associated with this. This is a normal component of sleep. Um, so if you just see a random central apnea, 
everything's cruising along, you see a little hiccup like this, and then flat, and then everything's cool again, don't worry about it. It's when you start seeing them back to back to back that you need to start to worry. This is another example of a central apnea you don't need to worry about. This is REM sleep. I didn't score this yet, so don't go, oh my god, you didn't score it. Um, this is completely uniform, right? Exact same thing, except there's no hiccup before it, right? No hiccup before it, central apnea. Central apnea meaning it's a flat airflow. You have a flat thoracic belt and a flat abdominal belt. And do you see how it manifests? It comes on smooth and then it's central. That This is a central apnea. If we go back up, this is not a central apnea. When the central apnea looking thing comes after the big spiky, <laughs> technical term, it is not a central apnea. If it comes before the big spiky thing, it is one. So this is this is a central apnea, yes. This is not a central apnea. Okay, you see the difference? Okay, this is a great example of a hypopnea. So you can see they're in REM sleep. Now this doesn't look like much, does it? We see a lot of these in our sleep, but we also see no jiggy-jaggy. See how nice and uniform these are? These are smooth. It actually looks the same as that, right? Which kind of looks the same as that. It looks the same as that. Ah, the only thing is this one had an oxygen saturation of 4% or more. And without an arousal, that qualifies as a hypopnea. But do we need to really worry about that? I would argue no, because there's no arousal here. Now, I'm not saying it's it's not a bad thing to be desaturating down into the 80s, especially 87. What I'm saying is this is not disruptive to sleep. So again, this is a way to tell is there an arousal or not is a great way to look for the jaggedness at the top of the, the, the respiration. Okay, we have another example of this. Exact same thing is occurring, except it's a not in REM sleep. So we can see that the airflow is decreasing. We have an oxygen desaturation of 4%. It goes from 93 to 80, 89 uh, no arousal here, but that does qualify as being a hypopnea. It's just it's not going to be disruptive to sleep, but it does meet the criteria for hypopnea. Okay, so this is kind of, I was talking about this a little bit before, how you see the breathing, how it looks, it's small, kind of sporadic, and then it increase, 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 and it decreases again, increase, 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 and then we see an arousal. Um, but look at the breathing after it. It's very erratic and it's all over the place. That's always a clue that you're waking up. Erratic breathing that's all over the place is a clue that you're waking up. If we go back up, see how smooth it is? There's no waking up. Erratic and there is an arousal above it. Same thing right here. Is there an arousal or not? Well, look at the airflow. Real erratic right here happens to correspond exactly with the arousal. Same thing here. We see a lot of, you know, this quick jerk up and then another one and then a bunch of craziness here quick quick back into sleep it gets rhythmic again all good clues for you to look for and then again here just because we see snoring that seems to be building and building and building does not mean that there is an arousal associated with it all right there you go i promised you a super boring video uh i think i delivered i think that was about as monotone and dry as you can get uh so anyway hopefully that helped out if you have any problems or questions about any of this uh, I, I know some of this, there's a lot of gray area, especially when you're looking at sleepyhead. You're looking at one single signal, and from that you're trying to deduce a whole host of things. So I'm really hoping that seeing these real-world examples of an actual sleep study going on uh, gives you a little more insight into what those waves might actually mean. And yes, I understand that it's part of my business to help people go through this stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm totally shooting myself in the foot by not charging for this. So if you would... If you would, every time you shop Amazon, I'll leave a link below. Just use the Amazon affiliate link. You don't pay anything more for stuff you buy on Amazon, but I do get a referral credit. And the other thing is, if you want to make a PayPal donation to me, that would be cool too. I'll leave a link for that below as well. Uh, and join my forum, freesleepupadvice.com forward slash forum. And uh, hey, we just passed 20,000 subscribers. How cool is that? Now, I'm not going to do any big show about it because you know, it's actually sad looking at the metrics. Like I look at someone, uh, a famous uh, YouTuber like PewDiePie, he has, um, I think like 60 million subscribers in every video he puts up. He puts up a video every day. He gets like 5 million views. And um, I think I have about a little over 5 million views for like the eight years that I've been on, on YouTube. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's like the driest 
most boring material ever, but hey, it needs to be done. So I'll do it. And I also understand that a lot of people that view my stuff, they, they come on, they, they binge watch, and then they're out of there. Um, so I don't exactly get like this building crowd that watches every single video. The, you know, some people do just to kind of check in. Anyway, I thank you for your support. And if you would not mind spreading the word, uh, let them know about freesteepupadvice.com as well as this channel, the link you left you 27. Um, and hey, if you want to support this channel, you can always shop for mask and whatnot at maskbright.com. And you can use our services at axgsleepdiagnostics.com. Other than that, I thank you and um, take care. If you are looking for a way to support us, but you really don't want to actually do anything, great option is to use our Amazon affiliate link below if by any chance you're an Amazon Prime member or just shop Amazon ever. Use that link. You don't pay any more, but we do get a referral fee for that and it really helps us out. Uh, the other thing you can do if you need a mask or anything, you can try maskbite.com. We sell the mask cleaner as well as slightly used mask, but still full of love.